We are Gavin and Emily, and for the past year, we've been converting an old school bus into a tiny home on wheels. This week, we cut a brand new hole in the bus and installed our water heater. Come along on our adventures. Good morning, everyone. We're ready to finally start putting our water heater in. So we've drawn where our hole is going in the bus. It's gonna sit right at the bottom of our closet here, and we'll probably just divide it off from where we actually store things. So I'm gonna start by drilling some holes in the corners so we can see where the box sits and then we'll go outside and cut the hole from there because it'll be easier to cut the metal from the outside. There's more metal. <laughs> Where did that come from? That's just the wall, the like inner wall of the bus, I guess. Ooh. A nice little serving platter. Oh, it's beautiful. Now to do it again, I guess. <laughs> Wow, look at our insulation. Ooh, ooh, it's so nice. Okay, so after I tore out the insulation on the other side, we could see we had a brace down here that we had put in on top of the wheel well, and the rest of this is just plywood. So I drilled some holes in from the outside to show me where my current hole is, which seems to line up pretty well with our box. So I'm just gonna remove the plywood so far that we can get to, and then we'll just need to trim around the edges. Hello. Hello, you're not a water heater. Not yet. Good job. Got our water heater, and now it's time to do a test fit. I might need to take off just a hair at the top corner where the metal comes down, but other than that... It looks clean on the inside. Pretty good. So we cut out the little part. The water heater fits in the hole now. Our water heater comes with this cover that goes on the outside of the bus, um, and then this just opens up. So the cover is actually a lot wider than what our hole is, so we just need to trim off the rub rail on either side so that the cover has room to sit flush against the wall of the bus. Yep, so the cover will hide everything and just give us a nice little, nice little vent hole to keep us from getting carbon monoxide poisoning. Yay. <laughs> so close. <laughs> so close. <laughs> First try. Dab. First try. Okay, we have the hole for the water heater. We lined it with some of our pink insulation roll there just so that there's a moisture barrier between that and this little frame I made out of two by twos. I know the lighting's terrible, sorry, but I just want to show you that. That's going to help support the water heater. I'm going to put it more up in that hole and just kind of glue it in. The water heater will hold it in better and so we're just going to pop that in and then we're pretty much ready to screw in the water heater. It looks okay. This is the water heater we chose. It is a tankless propane water heater. We decided to go with this model because it has this exhaust pipe that vents out the side of the bus. A lot of the other models we looked at, you needed to have a flue pipe that ran up to the ceiling and out the roof of the bus to vent, which we weren't really interested in and they took up a lot more space. Um, and this one just had a smaller footprint and we liked the look of it venting out the side of the bus. It is propane and then we'll hook up to our 12 volt system for its ignition so it runs on propane and 12 volt power 
and it's pretty small. It's about like a 13 by 13 inch square. It's going to sit just in the bottom of our closet and then we'll have it boxed in and have the rest of the room for storage. I will link this exact model down below. It was a little bit more expensive than the other models I looked at, so if you're interested in hearing more about those, um, just leave us a comment and we can chat about it. After reading through the instructions again, we realized that these holes are not to screw into the framing of the bus. They're actually there to screw into this door flange. So the door has a lip on it, so you can kind of see it fits. Give me one second. The door fits into the water heater housing and then has holes in the door lip that match up with those holes in the housing. So those holes are to attach this door flange to the water heater housing. So I'm gonna do that first and then the whole unit can just slide right into the hole in the bus. It looks like it fits well, test fit is all good. Before we actually screw it in for good, we need it to seal off where we cut through these rub rails on the side of the bus because right now they're just open and exposed metal. So I'm gonna take this back out and show you what we're gonna do. So here's where we cut the rub rail on the side of the bus to make room for, for the water heater door. As you can see, it's just hollow on the inside, so we're gonna have to fill that in. We're going to use a Bondo, just automotive body filler, to fill this in, and then we can sand it down and paint any of the exposed metal so we don't have any rusting. And then we'll be ready to just slide the water heater right in. We decided to fill in the cracks first with some great stuff. Um, that way the Bondo has something to fill in against and we're not just pushing it down into the rail. So I'm just squirting a little bit of the great stuff in first so that can create a barrier inside the rail for the Bondo to fill up against. Yeah. Tip if you're working with Bondo, work fast or use less than I did because it's been just a couple minutes and this is already hard. So we're done with that. But I filled both the holes. They look pretty good. So now we're just gonna wait till this is dry and then sand and paint and it'll be ready to, for the water heater. All right, everything is painted and ready to go. So we are going to screw the water heater in. We're gonna use some butyl tape around the edge of the door so that we get a nice good seal and then just use some stainless steel screws so that everything is rust proof and will last forever. All right, we've just cut a few strips of butyl tape that we're going to attach right along where the screw holes are on the back side of the water heater and that'll just help seal all our screw holes. Let's see if it peels off nicely. Ooh, 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 yeah. Well done. <laughs> Take three sheet metal screws. We've proven to ourselves time and time again are too weak to get through the metal of our bus. So like we have before, we're going back to some metal to metal, self-drilling, self-tapping screws, and they seem to be working. All right, she's all screwed in. Like Gavin said, we ended up using these metal self-drilling screws instead of the sheet metal stainless steel screws just because the sheet metal screws don't work screwing into the metal of the bus. Um, we think it'll be fine even though they're not stainless because they are covered by the door. And if we notice any rusting later on, we'll switch them out. But yeah, that is it. Our water heater is installed. And 
here is our water heater from the inside. So like we mentioned before, this is just inside of our closet. It'll take up the bottom foot or so of our closet. We'll put a board across. So then the rest of our closet is just storage space. And this will be appliance space, water heater, water pump, all that kind of stuff. And our plumbing will run through our closet to our sink and our shower. Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching this week. Thanks for watching this week's video. Obviously our water heater isn't connected to our plumbing and stuff yet. We are starting our plumbing now, so stay tuned because that will be next week's video. Gonna be a wet and wild time. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Love you. Love you. <laughs>